Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cocktail Block. I'm Steve the Bartender and today we're making 10 easy vodka cocktails using one bottle. Thanks to today's video sponsor, Grey Goose. Grey Goose is a premium French vodka made from soft winter wheat and limestone filtered spring water. Now there's a lot of people at home that probably don't have a back bar like this, so therefore I wanted to simplify things and make for easy entertaining one single bottle of vodka and a few pantry staples. You can always get these at your local grocery store and then you can make these 10 different cocktails or you can pick one or two, completely up to you. But I just wanna make this easy for you guys to make cocktails at home. Let's get straight into the drinks. Okay, we're gonna ease into this one with a basil cooler. Nice and herbal cocktail, nice and refreshing, a little bit citrusy and lengthen with soda. Shaking cocktail. So grab your tin and measure out 1.5 ounces, 45 ml of Grey Goose vodka. And then I've got basil syrup. This is a one-to-one -one simple syrup with basil blended in. Keep in mind you want to make this fresh because it's going to oxidize. It's going to turn brown relatively quickly within a couple of hours. So one ounce, 30 ml of fresh basil syrup. Then we want to balance out that, that sugar by adding a little bit of lime juice. Half an ounce, 15 ml. Add plenty of ice and then give it a shake for 10 to 12 seconds. Double strain of fresh ice into a highball. And then top with soda. Fresh basil has the garnish. Nice big bunch. And they have the basil gola. Nice and bright, citrusy. And that basil is really pungent, delicious. Yum. Next cocktail is my favorite vodka cocktail, the Kaplioshka. A uh, big fan and it's very simple, lime, sugar, vodka. Only the three ingredients, but I think the way you prepare the drink is important, the technique. And I'm quite particular in how I like to cut my lime, so I'll, I'll show you how that is. Uh, first of all, we want to cut off these little, little ends, and then you want to cut it from end to end, and then end to end again in half. Turn around and cut it in half again. So you've got little chunks instead of long wedges. You've got eight pieces, and this is just like how I like to cut them for my Caprioche Muse. I'm gonna start with our limes in the glass and add two heaped teaspoons of super fine or caster sugar. Now, of course, every drink can be made differently, so if you'd like to, you can use a, a raw sugar, a demerara sugar, completely up to you. I just feel that with a vodka, the the more refined sugar, um, is a, it's a neutral flavor that just works harmoniously with the vodka. So you wanna muddle that, and you're gonna extract some of the lime uh, lime oils from the skins and some of that juice as well. And then measure two ounces, 60 ml of vodka, and add it straight into the glass. And again, some people like to use pebble ice, crushed ice. Uh, some people like to shake the cocktail. If you think it's gonna to be too strong, then shaking it will add more dilution. Whereas this method is a little bit more rustic, just adding ice, giving a little bit of stir, and it's good to go. So I like to add a little bit of ice, not all the way to the top, just so I've got room so I can sort of move the ingredients around, give it a little bit of a stir, and then top it up with more ice. I like to serve my Capriosh as rustic. You can also add a lime wheel or a lime wedge on top of that, but uh, I've used all of my lime, and I'm not going to cut an extra lime just for just for garnish. Capriosh, cheers. Really limey, really zesty, but balanced. It's obviously got that sugar in there. Uh, if you don't want to use caster sugar, you can always use a simple syrup. That's still going to work really well. But I do like the granules of sugar so that when you muddle it, it kind of grinds into the lime and extracts the oil from the zest. On to the next one. Okay, so the first two drinks were relatively citrusy. Uh, so therefore, I thought I'd change it up and go something ultra simple, but a little bit tart rather than the, the citrus profile. Cape Cotter. Like, it, it's as simple as it can, as can get, and it calls for... Two ounces, 60 ml of vodka added straight into your glass, and then 90 ml, so three ounces of cranberry juice. I would ordinarily wouldn't measure this, but uh, for the sake of the video, I am. As you can see, the tide looks kind of out, but you just put heaps of ice in there, and it's going to fill it right up. And the key to any drink with uh, cranberry juice is squeeze of fresh lime. Fresh lime juice just works well with the tartness of the cranberry juice. Gentle stir, serve with a straw. Easy. A Cape Cotter. Dry, tart, just 
I don't drink a lot of crabber juice. Maybe I should start drinking more. Maybe bust out some more Cosmos. Time for a pineapple martini. But before those martini purists start telling me that this is not a martini, I know it's not a martini, but it was probably created around the 80s or 90s, around a time when everyone was naming their drinks after the glass it was served in. There was a lot of French martinis and, and pineapple martinis. So let's just get straight into the drink and enjoy it for what it is. Now this recipe only called for one and a quarter ounce of vodka, but I'm gonna bump it up just a, just a touch. 1.5 ounce, 45 ml. Add Grey Goose into your shaker, and then pineapple juice, fresh pineapple juice. Yes, um, today I'm using canned pineapple juice. So one ounce, 30 ml of pineapple juice. I feel like most people at home are probably gonna have canned or carton pineapple juice. Uh, then we wanna measure out one third of an ounce, 10 ml of rich syrup is the original recipe. I'm using Library Co's Demerara syrup, uh, a little bit more complexity rather than just a, a white sugar uh, using a Demerara. One third, 10 ml. And then one third of an ounce, 10 ml of fresh lime as well. Plenty of ice and shake. Into a chilled stem cocktail glass. I'll leave a link to this one in the description below. Because you've used the pineapple juice, you should get a nice texture and froth to the top of the cocktail. And I'm garnishing this one with three pineapple fronds. Now, if you use the um, the rich syrup, or in this case, a gum syrup, the combination of that and the pineapple juice is gonna provide a really nice texture to this drink. Pineapple, tropical, and yeah, beautiful texture. On to the next drink slash drinks. I'm making two at the same time, the Greyhound and the Salty Dog. Incredibly similar, but there's one slight tweak in the Salty Dog that I think makes it stand out from the Greyhound. So these drinks, well, at least the Greyhound was created around the 1930s and it was originally made with gin, but 1940s, 1950s, when vodka became more prevalent over in the States, people changed the spirit to vodka. And most of the recipes nowadays, if you have a little Google online, then you'll, you'll see it's served with the recipes, say, vodka or gin. So it's completely up to you, but obviously I'm doing a vodka video, so I'm going to use vodka. You wanna start with the salty dog, a piece of cut lime, and moisten the edge of your glass, and then roll in some salt. Uh, I'm using a chili salt sent to me by the garnish game. And done a pretty woeful job of salting this glass. Probably could put it in a bowl and it would work a lot better. But hey, there you have. So on the left hand side, I'm gonna do a greyhound. On the right hand side, I'm gonna do a salty dog. And it's simply 1.5 ounce, 45 ml of grey goose vodka. Add into both glasses. And then next we're gonna add the grapefruit juice. Now, I'm not 100% sure if it was white or uh, pink or ruby red grapefruit juice, um, but ruby reds were first discovered on some random orchard in South Texas in 1929. So roughly the time the Greyhound came out, the ruby reds were discovered. So possibly it was originally with white grapefruit juice, but if you look online, all the photos are with like pink grapefruit juice. Um, I've actually got a blend here of half white grapefruit and half ruby red. Um, again, it's up to you, but the ruby reds are, tend to be a little bit sweeter. So I'm gonna add three ounces, 90 ml of the grapefruit juice of your choice, or you can do like me and just blend it. And I'll garnish both of these with a wedge of ruby red grapefruit. They have the Greyhound and the Salty Dog. And of course, I've served the Greyhound with the straw and the other one without because you want to be able to drink the uh, salty dog through the salt. Now the whole purpose of the salt is to subdue that bitterness and then enhance those those brighter fruity flavors a little bit enhance the sweetness essentially. So this is a great comparison to do to, to discover the influence of salt on cocktails. Great for it's the hero. I mean it's it's a simple drink so um yeah yeah and the salty dog I mean, the difference that the salt has on the drink is remarkable. It's uh, It really changes the drink completely, and I much prefer the addition of the salt in this one, and which is why a lot of people use saline in cocktails. It enhances a lot of drinks. So my vote out of these two, the salty dog. Onto the grapefruit cooler. Now this one is a little bit confusing to me because typically a cooler in my eyes is served in a long glass, um, often with a spritz of soda, a um, bit of fruit juice, but this is a little bit different. It's It's been served in different ways on different websites, but 
in particular punchdrink.com they serve it in a stemmed cocktail glass but i've tried the drink um and it's delicious it works really well uh it's got a nice uh, balance of flavors i just don't know if it's a cooler nevertheless let's go ahead and make it uh two ounces 60 ml of vodka and of course if you've run out of grey goose and you need to restock there'll be a link in the description below for you to buy more the recipe actually calls the original recipe calls for a grapefruit vodka um this is a bit of a hack a term called regal shaking and it's simply adding a little bit of the grapefruit peel onto the bath into the shaker uh, and then shaking with the cocktail or including in the tin when you shake. So therefore it imparts those grapefruit nodes, a little bit of bitterness, some of those oils, and then you've made your own grapefruit vodka. Next ingredient, lemon juice, three quarter ounce, 22.5 bill. Add that straight in, freshly pressed of course. And then we've got two kinds of sweetener. Um, we've got one to one simple syrup, half an ounce, 15 mil, and a quarter ounce, 7.5 ml of honey syrup. Now, the reason being for this is just so that uh, the honey flavor is a little bit more subtle. We've got a dash of Angostura bitters. And a dash of Peshawd's bitters. There's actually quite a few different flavors coming together. So you've got uh, sweetness, citrus, two kinds of bitters. You've got the grapefruit in there. Uh, and then also to freshen it up a little bit, you've got a sprig of mint thrown straight into the shaker, uh, shaken and strained into a coop or a standard cocktail glass. Plenty of ice, and shake for 10 to 12 seconds. Into a chilled glass it goes, double strain of course, because you want to keep out all those little ice shards and the mint sprigs, or mint pieces, I should say. Feel free to garnish it with a um, sprig of mint or a single mint leaf if you like. We use grapefruit to enhance those grapefruit flavors. Express the oil over the top and drop it in. You can make a nicer twist, but I'm all about rustic garnishes. They have a grapefruit cooler. Cheers. There's a lot of surprising complexity to this drink because you've got those two kinds of bitters and the grapefruit in there. I really enjoy this. Make sure you try it. For all those Scrubs fans out there, I'm going to make an apple teeny. I've made this on the channel quite some time ago, but I think it could do with a little little bit of a tweak. So I'm going to remake it. So start with 60 ml, two ounces of vodka, 1.5 ounces, 45 ml of cloudy apple juice. Now, every time I use cloudy apple juice on the, on the channel, people ask a lot of questions about it. Here in Australia, it's just freshly pressed apples that it's, it's cloudy. It hasn't been filtered or anything like that. So I think in the States, some people call it cider. In Australia, cider is alcoholic, so I don't know, it confuses me. But uh, next we have fresh lemon juice. So one third of an ounce, 10 mil. And then maple syrup. One third of an ounce, 10 mil as well. Fill with ice and shake it. into a chilled coupe or martini glass, double strain of course, in it goes, not much of a wash line, garnishing with an apple fan, and they have a apple teeny, apple, maple, vodka, what can go wrong, it's a very tasty drink, it's easy, it's a little bit sweet, but I enjoy it. Now I can't make a vodka special without doing a Moscow Mule, so vodka, ginger beer, and a little bit of lime juice. I think the lime just really sort of sets it apart from just the, the two ingredient drink. Now you want to make sure you use a ginger beer, something dry and spicy. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, uh, but not too much. And of course you don't want to use ginger ale because that's different. Uh, ginger ale can be um, essentially a carbonated soft drink with added ginger flavors, where there's uh, ginger beer is brewed and I just it's just a better flavor. It's, a, it's something that I prefer and it's what you need to use to make a Moscow meal. So, uh, the salad. Two ounces, 60 ml, add it into your mule mug. Of course, if you don't have a mule mug, you can still make the drink. Just use a Hubble glass or an old fashioned. Completely up to you. It's not gonna change the taste of the drink, which is the most important thing. So 15 ml, half an ounce, fresh lime juice into the glass, into the mug. Then we're gonna fill this with ice and then top it with ginger beer, which is roughly four ounces, 120 ml. 
Now this is a big mug, so I want to make sure I get lots of ice so that I only get those four ounces of ginger beer in there. I don't want to water this down with too much ginger beer. Lots of ice. Top it up. Ordinarily, I do things quite rustic, and in this case, I would probably just use the spent lime to garnish the drink, but uh, I'm feeling, feeling pretty wild today, so I'm gonna garnish it with uh, a, a fresh wedge, wedge of lime. They have a Moscow Mule. Gingery, lime, a little bit of sweetness, but it's not, not too sweet. Just ginger beer and vodka, perfect together. Okay guys, this is where it gets interesting because I'm making a Bloody Mary. I've made this several times on the channel. The first time I did it, I got accosted for uh, not showing enough love because I only built it in the glass and I didn't throw it or shake it. And I've discovered finally after all these years that uh, it's, it's mainly the technique that I don't like it. And using the technique of throwing, I, I actually don't mind the drink. I'm also using, uh, you know, an amazing amazing quality vodka and then organic tomato juice so that that really helps but i think one of the key parts is just the method in in how you prepare the drink and i didn't show it love in the past so i've never thrown a drink before so i could end up with tomato juice all over the place but uh we'll see how it goes uh two ounces 60 ml of grey goose vodka and then follow that with organic tomato juice the best tomato juice you can get your hands on so four ounces, 120 mil. It's just, it looks so, so thick. And I think that's the key, the, the, the preparation of this drink. By using throwing, it's kind of a halfway point between stirring and shaking. So by throwing the drink, by passing it from tin to tin, it adds aeration, dilution, and, and it chills the drink, but not to the point of shaking. Shaking is really aggressive. So I think the fact that it uh, dilutes a little bit and thins out that tomato juice is the reason why I've enjoyed it a little bit more than I have in the past. Fresh, fresh lemon juice. One quarter ounce, seven and a half mil. Then Worcestershire, two dashes. I mean, it's not a very good dash, so you'd be the judge of that. Four dashes of Tabasco. There's plenty of different recipes out there. There's, uh, you know, different salts and peppers and um, horseradish and what have you, elaborate garnishes. But I found that this is just like a good, good base recipe. One, two, three, four, and crack some pepper and add a pinch of salt. Here's where the technique comes into play. You want to add ice into your big tin, and you'll need to use a Hawthorne strainer that actually fits into tin. I like how I'm talking that I'm actually teaching you guys how to throw a cocktail, but I've never done before. So keep that in mind. Um, this is just what I've heard about throwing drinks. But uh, so you want to start with the large tin full of ice up high. Um, and if you've had practice at it, you can get some movement into it, but I'm not going to do that because this is my first time. Um, large tin full of ice, pull the drink across, then lower the tin, Try and make as little mess as possible. Oh, move it. And three or four pours will be, I think, should be enough to add some dilution, chill it, aerate it a little bit, not too much. Uh, then you're good to go to transfer it into your glass of fresh ice. Transfer it to the glass. Top it with ice if you need to. That looks pretty spot on. Now, typical garnish, you'd probably use a a celery stick. Uh, if you've seen those wild garnishes out there with celery, lemon, hamburgers, bacon. I, I like citrusy drinks and I like that extra acidity in this in particular as well. So I'm gonna garnish it with that piece of lemon. So there's plenty of additions and improvements that you can make on the Bloody Mary different herbs and spices and obviously elaborate garnishes a little bit more elaborate than just a slice of lemon but i think this is a good base recipe coming from someone that ordinarily doesn't like bloody marys cheers tomato juice i, I don't normally like it and for some reason it's just this balance of ingredients the grey goose vodka the addition of the organic tomato juice just works works well and it's got a nice level of spice i think this is a good base level if you like it spicy then add some more horseradish add some more tabasco um, but this is a really good starting point. Again, coming from someone that doesn't like Bloody Marys. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you check out the Grey Goose channel for more vodka cocktails. 
Or if you want to see more single bottle cocktails, such as bourbon whiskey, check out this one right here. I'll see you soon.